Giancarlo Esposito is a master of TV villainy. Today, let's look at some facts that fans never knew about him. Did Esposito almost miss out on the role of Gustavo Fring? And how did he end up playing Stan Edgar in The Boys? What is Esposito like in real life? Stick around to the end and we will tell you all that you need to know. First up, incredibly long name and mixed heritage. Giancarlo Esposito's full name can be quite a mouthful. It's Giancarlo Giuseppe Alessandro Esposito. He was born in 1958 to Giovanni Esposito and Elizabeth Foster in Copenhagen. His father is Italian and he worked as a stagehand and a carpenter, whereas his mother was an African-American opera and nightclub singer. He spent six years in Denmark before moving to New York, USA. From a young age, he was interested in music, and he says that he got his love for music from his mother. At the age of seven, he began recording radio commercials. Esposito identifies as being African-American and Italian and considers both cultures to be intrinsic to his identity. Next, the Broadway debut. Giancarlo Esposito did not start his career on the silver screen. Rather, he started off on Broadway. However, he did consider becoming a priest for a short while. He made his debut in 1968 when he was just eight years old in a Broadway production of Maggie Flynn. Though he was part Italian and part African American, he started off playing African American characters. He has stated that in the 1960s and 70s, opportunities for African Americans were limited on Broadway, so he had to expand his repertoire. Esposito has an ear for languages, and he picked up Spanish, so he went on to play Hispanic characters. However, later, he found out that he was taking away opportunities from actors who actually had Hispanic backgrounds, so he stopped taking these roles. He was cast in the title role of the 1980 play Zoo Man as a sociopathic street thug. He researched this role by hanging out with street thugs. Spike Lee happened to be in that audience and was impressed by his performance. More on that later. Even after becoming a mainstream Hollywood actor, he still loves and performs theater. He is a member of the Atlantic Theater Company, which is an off-Broadway, non-profit theater. He played the role of Donaldo Calderon in an Atlantic Theater Company production in 2012. Next, Spike Lee and Giancarlo Esposito. Fans may be surprised to know about the association between between Esposito and director Spike Lee. In 1980, Spike Lee was working on the musical School Days, and he asked Esposito to read this musical. At that time, Spike Lee was still in college. In 1988, School Days was made into a movie, and Esposito was cast as Dean Big Brother Almighty, who was the leader of a black fraternity called Gamma Phi Gamma. This movie also starred actors like Lawrence Fishburne, Tisha Campbell, and Samuel L. Jackson, who would go on to find mainstream success in the 90s. Esposito then went on to act in three other movies directed by Spike Lee. It was through his association with Spike Lee that Esposito got his first taste at playing villainous roles. Now, the appearance on Sesame Street. It may surprise you that Esposito has appeared in children's TV shows like Sesame Street. In 1982, Esposito played the role of Mickey in four episodes of Sesame Street. He was Big Bird's camp counselor. Esposito said that he enjoyed his role on the show since he loved education and learning and that it was very special role for him. Before his appearance on Sesame Street, he appeared in The Electric Company, which is also an educational show. He's gone on to act in other programs that are meant for kids, like the 2020 comedy, TV series, home movie, The Princess Bride, and DuckTales. He has also lent his voice to the 2016 movie Jungle Book as the wolf Aquila. Now, the career as an evil boss. Esposito starred as Nicholas Hahn, a bully and somewhat evil boss in the TV drama Girls Club. The series was produced by TV legend David E. Kelly. However, the show received poor reviews, and out of a planned run of 13 shows, only 9 were filmed and only 2 were broadcast. Though this is only a minor blip in the actor's career, Esposito credits this appearance as the turning point in his career, and he started getting cast as villainous bosses. Now, appearances in procedural dramas. Throughout the 1990s and the 2000s, Esposito appeared in several procedural dramas like CSI Miami, New Amsterdam, and Law & Order Trial by Jury. He was also cast in the original Law & Order. He appeared in Season 7, Episode 3, titled Good Girl, where he portrayed trade, a defense attorney. Around eight years later, he appeared again in season 14 and 15 of the show as another defense attorney. He made appearances in three episodes this time around. Surprisingly, Esposito's character, Rodney Fallon, is a lawyer who tries to help innocent people who have been wrongfully convicted. Up next, Esposito almost misses out on Gustavo Fring. Yes, Esposito almost didn't get the part of Gustavo Fring. The Breaking Bad showrunner Vince Gilligan didn't think he could get Esposito to star in his show, so he didn't even contemplate casting him. Later, after watching tapes of Esposito's performance, Gilligan was determined to get him onto the show. Even after Esposito was cast in the show, he wasn't supposed to be the main antagonist. The initial plan was that Tuco Salamanca and Hector Salamanca would be the primary antagonists in Breaking Bad. Gustavo Fring was only supposed to make a few appearances. His character was meant to be a cold and calculating person who could provide a counterpoint to the hot-headed Tuco Salamanca. The producers were so impressed by Esposito's performance that they wanted him to appear in more episodes, and later it was decided that he deserved an important role. Esposito was not too 
too keen on having a bit part role and wanted to be closely involved in the series. Gilligan promised him that he would have a unique character who would present the facade of a legitimate businessman while being heavily involved in the drug trade. Esposito has stated that he enjoyed playing the character of Gustavo Fring since the character was extremely complex and he had multiple shades and layers. On one hand, he was a pillar of the community and was well respected by everyone all the while being a ruthless drug kingpin. He also says that his excellent chemistry, no pun intended, with Brian Cranston allowed the on-screen relationship of Gustavo Fring and Walter White to flourish. He also credits the high quality of writing as one of the reasons he was able to portray such an intimidating and mysterious character. Next, he didn't even audition for The Boys. By the time The Boys was being cast, Esposito was one of the most coveted actors in Hollywood. He was shooting the crime drama television series Jet in Canada. At the time, he had a chance encounter with Eric Kripke, the showrunner of The Boys. Kripke felt that Esposito was perfect for the role of Stan Edgar and asked Esposito to join the cast of The Boys. Once Esposito stepped into the shoes of Stan Edgar, he found that it was a character with massive potential and found the show to be a perfect fit. He found parallels between the role of the CEO of Vought International and the CEOs of many real-life multinational corporations. Up next, Esposito in The Mandalorian. In the Disney show The Mandalorian, Esposito plays the rather villainous character of Moff Gideon. He landed this role due to his long association with John Favreau. Favreau and Esposito had previously collaborated on projects like the TV show Revolution and the movie The Jungle Book. When Favreau was thinking about who would play Moff Gideon in The Mandalorian, Esposito was the natural choice. Once Esposito bagged the role of Moff Gideon, he called up Samuel L. Jackson, who had previously played Mace Windu, to let him know that he was also in the Star Wars universe now. Fans and critics have found Moff Gideon to be rather terrifying villain. In contrast, when Esposito talks about his time in the show, he says that his heart melted seeing and interacting with the animatronic puppet Grogu. He fell in love with the cute and adorable features like the eyes and the little body of the puppet. That's not what you'd expect your villain to be saying, right? Now, we have the voice acting career. Esposito has lent his voice to video games, including Far Cry 6 and Payday 2. In Far Cry 6, he voices Anton Castillo, the antagonist in the video game, and he was modeled after Esposito. In Payday 2, he voiced a character called The Dentist. Lastly, yoga, saxophones, and hats. Esposito has multiple interests apart from acting. He's a rather exuberant, talkative, and laid-back person in real life. This shocks fans when they meet him because a lot of his standout roles are rather stern, stoic, and silent. He enjoys practicing yoga, playing the saxophone, riding bikes, and designing hats. That sounds like a handful, right? Usually, if Esposito is the villain in a TV show or movie, it means that the other characters are in for a world of pain. But we see that he is a talented actor who has played multiple roles throughout his career. What do you think of Esposito's role in The Mandalorian? Who is your favorite TV villain? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.